Hi friends, it's that time of year again. Nothing like a nice new cover for a nice new year. The staining on my pressing station, it happens over time and it happens to all of us. If you don't recall, mine, it's on wheels. It's an old manicure table that I repurposed into a pressing station on wheels. You'll need some pretty fabric and you'll need some elastic. And of course, you'll need something to cover. Enough talking already. Let's refresh and renew. Because every pressing station is different, whether it be rectangle, square, round, you will have to decide for you what shape to cut your fabric into. Let me share with you what's underneath here. You can see right here, I have elastic. It's zigzagged, you know, just like a shower cap. I don't finish the seam there at all because I change it so often. There's no doubt you get a really good press with a wool mat. And that's why I keep mine underneath my cotton fabric. It takes two different size wool mats for me to cover my entire pressing area on my pressing station on wheels. There's another one right here. Have some of that Thinsel Bright right here. One layer of that. Two layers of just a regular tight batting. A layer of flannel underneath that. This is kind of like a Formica type top on this manicure table. I've been using it for a couple years now and I've had no trouble of anything melting or anything like that. I am going to keep these layers, however. I'm not going to refresh these because they are in pristine, perfect condition. There's no need to. However, what I will do, I will flip my wool mats because I don't typically flip my mats on a regular basis. So not sure if you can see here, but I do have another piece of elastic going underneath this. And that just anchors everything so it stays down. If it was more of a square shape, I wouldn't worry about it too much, but this just helps anchor this middle section to go in and under. Nobody likes anything flipping up when they're trying to iron, right? I will cut this elastic off right here and I will reuse it. This right here, it's seen better days, so it's going in the garbage. Wait, not in the garbage just yet. I don't wanna to have to reinvent the wheel every time I make a cover for this. Slice right into the elastic. I'm just going to cut all of that elastic right off of there. Because when I unravel that, I'm going to have my template to make my next cover. I could repurpose this, but I'm not going to. I want fresh elastic on my pressing station. So this can go in the garbage. This is the fold right here on my pretty new fabric. And here's the fold right here on my template. And then I'm gonna guesstimate. That's how I do things. <laughs> I'm just gonna think I know what a half inch is and I'm just going to add it and sketch all the way around. Now it's time to throw this one away. I'm just going to follow the sketch that you made and just cut it out. So before I go any farther, I'm going to just lay this out just to make sure that I indeed did get a correct cut. You never know what happens at the cutting station, so it's better just to check. Looks like this one's gonna fit just as good as the other one. First thing I'm going to do is take off that one little piece of elastic that I did save, the one that was underneath the pressing station. I'm actually just going to tack that down on here. Remember, this is going to go under my station and then I'm going to pin it on the other side. Whenever you're dealing with elastic, you definitely want to use a zigzag stitch as well. This piece is tacked on, so it's not going to go anywhere. As we try to sew the other elastic on, we don't really have to worry about this piece anymore. You can serge this too, as a side note. I'm going to put it up to the very edge of where I cut. As you're attaching your elastic after you have backstitched, it's then time to play a little bit of a tug of war. Right now, before I can get to the end of the elastic coming out the back, I'm going to give it a tiny tug and hold my hand here. Just a very tiny, tiny tug. All the while keeping the elastic right along the edge that I cut. As soon as I can get a hold of this back here, I will grab it and hold this here. Kind of pull it from both ends and stitch at the same time. It's kind of a balancing act, but you can do it. If we did not play a little bit of tug of war with our elastic, 
it would be very, very loose, and we don't want that. We want a nice tight fit. Well, here you can see I've got a good handle on it now, and I'm just pulling. And you can see here I have my elbow kind of <laughs> helping my fabric along. Hey, if it works, it works, right? Hopefully you can see how nice, nice and elasticy. When you get to the end, you just snip it off. I really don't know how much elastic I used for it because I just keep pulling it until it ends and then I snip it. So I'll pull this elastic from underneath. And then I just tuck this excess elastic right here and there. Let's get these wrinkles out. It's not over. Look at your screen right now. I have hand-picked videos just for you if you enjoyed today's tutorial. Click on one of them so we can keep learning together. Until next time on the Sewing Channel, take care.